Many of us PC enthusiasts are on board the hype train for next gen and are planning to upgrade to the next gen CPUs and GPUs that are coming out presumably in a few weeks time. Seeing as, perhaps surprisingly, most people don't sell their old PCs after upgrading to a new system, I thought I'd do a quick video showing how to put that old system of yours to good use once you do upgrade. So let's build a PC for retro gaming and pair it with the proper displays for the complete nostalgia pack. This video is sponsored by UCDKeys.com. UCD Keys offers Windows 10 and Windows 11 Pro keys at super affordable prices. Currently, they have Windows 11 Pro for $21 and Windows 10, which is what I personally use, for just $14. There's also Office Keys of various kinds. I've used this service myself, as have lots of my patrons and viewers, and the service works great, and the keys work globally. We're partnering with UCD Keys for a special offer by using the coupon code C30 you will get an additional 20% off of any purchase. Visit ucdkeys.com or click the links in the description. I have some carcasses of PCs along with a couple of CRT displays here in a corner of my living room. These served as mining rigs for the last few months and I've since gutted them for other projects, but between them there should be enough parts to build a modest PC. Now you might be wondering how can you connect a CRT display in the CRT TV to a current gen PC? You're going to need some adapters and the important thing to remember is that you need active adapters. In this case I have one for the the Sony CRT, which is HDMI to VGA, and one for the CRT TV, which is HDMI to SCART. SCART is an old European connector that's sort of a precursor to HDMI as it carries both picture and sound. For this to work with these adapters, I'm going to need a GPU with two HDMI outputs. If your GPU is more recent, it likely will only have one HDMI, so you'll have to find a display port to analog adapter. Again, and this is very important, just make sure sure it's of the active kind. Active adapters typically have a USB connector in addition to the display connector. Do not buy passive adapters of which you will find loads on Amazon and eBay. Those won't work. Check the video description for links to ones that do. I have a bunch of GPUs that are not currently in rigs, but of those only one has two HDMI ports. The venerable RX 580 from AMD. Years after its release, this GPU just keeps on giving. I do have older GPUs use with analog connectors, but maybe I'll do a proper retro build with a Pentium 4 or something like that in the future and use those in that build. If you'd like to see such a build, let me know in the comments. So going through the cutted PCs, I ended up throwing together 8GB of RAM and a couple of 128GB SSDs on an AMD X470 platform. The CPU on the rig I'm using is the 3300X, which is sort of an obtainium at this point, but any old quad-core CPU you have laying around will be more than capable of running old games, emulators and MAME. So after putting the PC together, it was just a matter of connecting the adapters to the CRTs again. I'll repeat this, make sure you get active adapters if you decide to do a similar build. You can see the specs for the system here, very modest and really just stuff I had around collecting dust. You might see some flickering on the CRTs, that's because the camera wasn't recording at the same refresh rate as the displays, but in person there's no flickering. Time to install some games. If you plan to use actual physical media, then you'll need a CD, DVD, reader, obviously. Check the description for a link to a cheap one. I'm running Windows 10 here and we'll look at some alternatives in a second and on Windows 10 you will likely run into issues when trying to install some older titles, especially something as old as the original Diablo. In most cases you can sort these issues out either with DLLs that the community has put out and that you can find online, just google them, or you can use something like DOSBox which is a Nex86 emulator that will run old programs. So you can see I'm running Diablo straight from Windows here but I had to use DOSBox to run on Tyrion 2000 here on the CRT TV, which by the way looks awesome. Using these CRTs doesn't just add to the nostalgia factor, these games were designed to run on these displays and they look great, with great contrast and vibrant colors, not to mention the instant response times. CRTs also don't have a native resolution, so you can scale to different resolutions without any artifacting. 
If you don't own old PC games in physical form, a great source to get classic games is of course getting them from GOG.com, where a lot of PC classics have been modernized in the sense that they will run in Windows 10 or 11 without much fuss. And of course, there's also MAME. You can go to mamedev.org to get the latest version of this emulation framework. But of course, I can't tell you where to get the thousands of classic games that it will run. But if you Google the words on screen now, I'm sure it will get you started on the right track. Once in MAME, you just have to configure your Xbox controller or PlayStation controller if you prefer that, and you're off to the races. I'm a sucker for old shmups like Dodonpachi or Adul and many others, and man, playing these on CRTs is a ton of fun. Lastly, I should just mention a few alternatives to Windows if you want to get more adventurous. There's Chimera OS, which is based off of Arch Linux, and it's a great option if you want to do more of a couch build, as it will run Steam in big picture mode by default, and it's super easy to set up. It supports Steam and GOG games just fine. And whether you choose to use Windows or Linux, if you're going to be mostly focusing on emulators, then give RetroArch a look. RetroArch is a front-end for emulators and game engines, and it looks awesome with game art and a very intuitive user interface, especially compared to something more cumbersome like MAME. Now, if you're younger and you're not familiar with these older games and you don't know where to start, I've compiled a list of classic games that I recommend over on the Cortex Substack. There's a link in the description for that. Oh, and regarding CRTs, these have been getting more and more expensive in recent times. I got mine a few years ago for less than 30 euros, and that's same monitor these days goes for around 400 euros, and that's if you can find one. What I recommend you do is looking for these at local lads rather than eBay. Not to mention that if you get them on eBay, you'll pay an absolute fortune in shipping as these weigh a ton. You might also find them at local schools or universities or recycling centers. If you're diligent, you'll be rewarded with a unique gaming experience that perhaps only OLED panels can match when it comes to contrast and response times especially. CRT TVs are quite a bit easier to come by, and they're often super cheap. The one I'm using I got for free. So that was a quick video that will hopefully inspire you to breathe new life into your old system as you transition to the RTX 4000 or RX 7000 series of GPUs and the Raptor Lake or Zen 4 platforms. Stay tuned to the channel as I will be reviewing and analyzing all of those launches over the coming months. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons who not only support me financially, but also contributed with great suggestions for this video in our community Discord. You'll get instant access to the Cortex Discord server by becoming a patron for just $1 per month. Thanks for watching and until the next one.